GBS Good evening and welcome to the Insight tonight. My name is Eugene Kwach and you're watching GBS Today TV. Today, the 26th day of January 2024, marks a truly remarkable day here at GBS TV. In this special edition of the Insight, we embark on a journey to unravel the intricate dynamics of international relations, shedding light on Africa's urbanization, challenges and quest for sustainable cities. Join us in extending a warm welcome to our distinguished guest, His Excellency Dr. Mikhail Nainar, the Acting Executive Director of the UN Habitat. As we delve into a conversation that promises to deepen our understanding of the ever-changing global landscape, of course, it will be a deep conversation. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invite. You can also follow this conversation at GBS TV Africa, uh, on GBS TV Africa platforms, and of course, you can find us on various social media platforms at GBS TV Africa, at Quatch Official. 21144 is our SMS line, and you can also use the hashtag, the insight, to of course engage us on social media platforms. Thank you so much, sir, for, uh, for, for coming once again. Thanks very much. Good evening and uh, pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. The topic today is sustainable cities. Of course, we're looking at the challenges and we're looking at the opportunities. But before we start uh, into this conversation, I've known you so much as an educator because you've championed so many courses globally on matters education. Maybe you can tell us, because we understand that quality education is a very critical sustainable development goal among the 17 sustainable development goals that we have, SDG number four. From where you sit, what is the role of a transformative, uh, what is the transformative role of edu a quality education and what do you define as quality education? Indeed, um, education uh, is, is extremely important and relevant uh, for any area of development. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in Africa, but uh, all over the world. Uh, as you mentioned, I, uh, I of course, believe in education mm -hmm. uh, wholeheartedly, not only because I used to be a high school teacher, that's mm -hmm. how my professional career started uh, back uh, in uh, Slovakia in 1993. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was a high school teacher of English and Russian for, for about seven years mm -hmm. uh, before I uh, made a transition to the diplomatic service. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, some of uh, uh, your viewers uh, may remember me from before when I uh, served in this beautiful country as Balozi uh, was Slovakia Pakenya. That was uh, back in 2012 to, to 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been back uh, to Kenya, to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I heard a lot of Karibu Nyumbani. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I uh, came uh, in April of uh, 2023 mm -hmm. uh, as uh, uh, Deputy Executive Director now for a while as Acting Ex Executive Director of uh, UN Habitat, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, headquartered here in Nairobi mm -hmm. uh, as one of the two UN uh, agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, it is really so much connected uh, mm -hmm. to Africa and, and to Kenya in particular. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, just one last uh, thought on, uh, on education. Um, uh, there is also a huge linkage to urban development and mm -hmm. urbanization. Mm -hmm. Because if we are looking at uh, uh, addressing housing, uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, other urban related mm -hmm. uh, development issues, mm -hmm. uh, all of them somehow do not make sense without uh, proper access to education, mm -hmm. without uh, ensuring that uh, education uh, and, of course, good quality mm -hmm. education uh, is provided uh, to, to every child and, and every young person, mm -hmm. um, and that it is not some sort of a privilege, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it is uh, uh, a basic uh, human right uh, mm -hmm. indeed. Thank you so much. We are speaking, of, of course, you are the ambassador, the, the people's ambassador. <laughs> Thank you so much. But again, um, still speaking on the sustainable development goals, in 2015, over 193 countries uh, joined hands under UN uh, with uh, certain agendas called the sustainable development goals. 
we are nine years into this since uh, this began. From where you sit, uh, working closely with the UN, uh, where do you think that the planet is? Where are we? Indeed, uh, we have this uh, uh, universal blueprint uh, mm -hmm. of the 2030 Agenda uh, and of uh, 17 Sustainable uh, Development Goals agreed uh, back in uh, 2015 mm -hmm. with um, uh, a lot of uh, excitement and, and a strong commitment. And by the way, uh, Kenya, through uh, your former ambassador to the United Nations, Macharia Kamau, mm -hmm. was very much uh, in the driving seat of, mm -hmm. uh, of discussing uh, what we have today as the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, uh, they have been extremely relevant in particular for, for Africa. But again, it's a universal agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, anywhere in the world, uh, we have areas where we need to improve, where we need to do better. Mm -hmm. uh, precisely for, uh, for achieving the uh, overarching uh, principle, mm -hmm. uh, being uh, leaving no one behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, addressing in different contexts, in different uh, levels of development, uh, what, is, what is missing yes. or, or what needs to be fixed. Okay. And there are always uh, things that need to be fixed in relation to, uh, to inequalities okay. uh, uh, in particular. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, you have uh, hit the nail on its head uh, mm -hmm. by asking, uh, you know, how uh, we are uh, coping or how fast we are going or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, uh, uh, we unfortunately all realize mm -hmm. that uh, there are too many challenges around us today, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's conflict uh, or it's climate change, mm -hmm. uh, or it is the exacerbating uh, okay. inequalities. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and of course, uh, that really hampers uh, okay. us and slows us down. I don't uh, even probably have to mention the pandemic. Okay. But, um, but we need to stay the course. Mm -hmm. That would be my, my main message uh, 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 for, for how to proceed. Thank you so much. Let's talk about sustainable cities. Of course, now we talk about the challenges and opportunities. You have been, as the acting secretary, uh, as the acting executive director, UN Habitat, actually, you have been very critical in fostering a lot of issues and matters uh, to see sustainable urbanization. Well, I would love to ask you that from where you, you see it, what do you define or what what are the key challenges or opportunities uh, in this dynamic landscape? Well, um, uh, urbanization is our future, mm -hmm. uh, whether we like it or not. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we see it uh, all around us, including in this beautiful country in, in Kenya, mm -hmm. where uh, even uh, today already uh, we globally see that uh, close to half of the uh, world's population is already in the urban uh, environment mm -hmm. uh, and and by 2050 it will it will rise to 70 percent mm -hmm. uh, and uh, these numbers are, are very similar for for kenya mm -hmm. and of course with uh, uh, the increasing uh, youth population we see even uh, further uh, push in in this particular direction mm -hmm. in kenya's context um, including in uh, in uh, uh, smaller and mid-sized cities mm -hmm. because when we are talking about urbanization it certainly it's not only about nairobi mm -hmm. as um, uh, as, a, as a, you know the capital city or as a, as a metropolis or other larger cities uh, mm -hmm. So um, we, we need to concentrate mm -hmm. on uh, uh, what will be the dimensions of uh, our urban future. Mm -hmm. And of course, we need to do better in terms of urban planning, mm -hmm. in terms of projecting uh, you know, some of these developments and ensuring that we are ready, mm -hmm. that they don't uh, uh, kind of uh, find us unprepared, mm -hmm. which of course often today is the case mm -hmm. uh, we, because we are experiencing a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, unexpected uh, uh, developments uh, or, if you will, spontaneous uh, 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 ways of, uh, of uh, uh, settling in, in certain places mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. of course, uh, uh, a sprawling uh, of informal settlements mm -hmm. or slums, uh, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and globally, we have seen a, a sharp increase. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, when, when it comes to the number of people living uh, in informal settlements, uh, 
reaching 1 billion mm -hmm. globally in 2020, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is really a, a worrisome trend mm -hmm. that, that needs to be addressed. And this is exactly what, uh, what UN Habitat focuses on, mm -hmm. supporting uh, countries, including countries in Africa, in mm -hmm. urban planning uh, uh, and uh, in addressing uh, all the uh, challenges that I'm mentioning, mm -hmm. including inequalities, but mm -hmm. including, of course, housing, access to water, sanitation, mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. climate-related um, uh, effects of, uh, uh, of uh, these developments uh, in such a way that, um, uh, that we do better mm -hmm. and that we offer uh, the people of today, mm -hmm. but uh, also the people of tomorrow, mm -hmm. and of course here I'm talking a lot about the young people, mm -hmm. better opportunities mm -hmm. uh, and better trajectory mm -hmm. for uh, where they will be living and, and how they will be living. Mm -hmm. You're talking about, uh, you've talked about something that is quite critical in urban urbanization, and that is inclusive urban planning. I would love to maybe delve a conversation around uh, uh, inclusive urban planning, if you can maybe tell us, because uh, we understand that it, the UN Habitat actually is working to ensure that urban development in, is inclusive. But how is it working to ensure that those people who uh, come from the marginalized areas, or rather those people, it, it addresses uh, issues that affects the vulnerable? Indeed, uh, uh, we, we have to take care of the vulnerable mm -hmm. and of the disadvantaged more uh, than, than of the others. Mm -hmm. And of course, often mm -hmm. uh, children and young people mm -hmm. are among the, the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are also talking about the women and girls, uh, uh, the disabled, uh, but also the elderly. So, mm -hmm. of course, uh, there are different uh, uh, ways of, of uh, how we need to focus on, on, on these challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, UN Habitat's uh, role a lot is uh, focused on advising uh, either national governments or uh, county governments um, and other uh, actors uh, who are important in, in, in this urban context uh, mm -hmm. on, on, on really how to uh, prioritize uh, uh, things properly, mm -hmm. how to avoid um, uh, spontaneous or unplanned developments, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how to also uh, devise comprehensive solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, I can mention uh, maybe one or two specific projects. Uh, mm -hmm. In Kenya, we have worked uh, uh, recently very closely both with the national government and with the uh, Nairobi City County mm -hmm. uh, on the Nairobi Rivers uh, mm -hmm. project, mm -hmm. uh, uh, where, of course, uh, uh, you have a lot of uh, various challenges somehow combined. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it's, it's an environmental issue mm -hmm. uh, because, yes, the rivers uh, uh, need to be, are, they are polluted, they need to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but um, uh, if you only focus on, on cleaning up the river, mm -hmm. uh, the same situation may reappear uh, very quickly. So, mm -hmm. of course, we, we also need to address the housing situation, mm -hmm. the various uh, underlying social and economic challenges, mm -hmm. uh, offering the, the people who, uh, let's say, contribute to, to some of the negative trends, uh, other solutions, mm -hmm. uh, other opportunities mm -hmm. when it comes to land, mm -hmm. housing, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to, uh, as I mentioned, uh, access to water, sanitation, but also health, education. And, and we are uh, advising um, uh, the government uh, and the county uh, to, to do it well and of mm -hmm. course helping also with resource mobilization, guaranteeing uh, in one way or another that uh, the conversations that we are having uh, uh, you know, are, are well structured, mm -hmm. uh, uh, bringing together uh, the, the various actors, of course domestic ones uh, mm -hmm. and also some, uh, uh, some supporters uh, from the international community. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is the way we, uh, we design uh, uh, these projects mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, of course we, we have uh, high uh, expectations mm -hmm. but also good results. Another uh, very uh, uh, positive and, and very well developing project uh, is what we call Go Blue. Uh, in uh, five uh, Kenya coastal counties, uh, plus Taita mm -hmm. uh, where we again work with the governors uh, and with the local actors 
on uh, uh, on capitalizing on on the ocean uh, mm -hmm. that uh, is given to us by uh, by God, um, uh, and of course it brings uh, uh, economic uh, opportunities, but also has uh, has challenges. And okay. of course, again, we have to plan mm -hmm. uh, for for the future. So okay. we are teaching. Uh, Let's say um, uh, fishermen to to also create their own fish ponds, mm -hmm. uh, which would uh, kind of double up on on the on the fish production. Mm -hmm. We are also addressing to the, together with the uh, counties the the public space mm -hmm. as well as um, as waste management systems. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the practical examples, which probably are more. Uh, uh, more understandable Thank you. For, for, for people. Thank you so much. You've mentioned that you guys partner and work with several actors to actually achieve one thing. But I understand that uh, in a place like Kenya, which is quite uh, political, you get that during politic times, uh, people have got different ideologies. Politicians, uh, the MCAs, the members of parliament, everyone across has got different ideologies and different plans. So, and we also understand that apart from the national and the county government, we also have other actors like the, the AU and so many other actors. How do you guys work together so that you can have a one agenda for sustainable cities? Indeed, uh, you cannot separate uh, politics uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, all these developments, uh, policy decisions, uh, are often taken by uh, decision makers uh, and those are uh, political actors uh, on different levels, whether on the national or on the county level, uh, or uh, uh, they are sitting in the National Assembly or in the Senate. Uh, but um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's no rocket science, I would say. Of course, we are not, um, uh, as a UN agency, uh, involved in, in any of the political discussions, mm -hmm. and we are not on anybody's side. Uh, uh, of course, we are uh, very uh, uh, neutral, and of course, we are very inclusive. Uh, and myself, I can say, you know, having served here before, uh, uh, back in 2012 to 2015, first uh, uh, during uh, uh, the Kibaki administration, and then the, the first administration of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, where the current president uh, William Ruto served as uh, as deputy president, and of course, uh, you know the first uh, group of governors that uh, that emerged uh, uh, back in 2013. So um, I I, I think uh, uh, you know this uh, in sh in no way uh, should and and even uh, in no way does derail us uh, mm -hmm. from what we are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes the conversations. Uh, need to be uh, uh, taking uh, uh, some time and of course uh, we need to uh, ensure that uh, that we have designed solutions uh, that uh, that fit uh, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, the, the context mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that are designed for the people and this is the key mm -hmm. uh, we are not uh, uh, here to lean on on anybody's side mm -hmm. uh, as long okay. as we keep the uh, the interest uh, and um, and the needs of, of the people uh, in mind, and I think this is uh, 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 the the best solution. Mm -hmm. But of course, yeah, dialogue, uh, engagement, uh, uh, and uh, 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 and uh, conversations uh, uh, on on some of these uh, uh, issues, including some sensitive ones, is is key. Okay, thank you so much. Well, as we continue the conversation, well, there is one very critical issue that has actually impeded and thwarted the economics or sustainability, be it even urban, uh, urban sustainability or just generally growth in our country, and that is corruption. While I understand that you guys partner with, with national government, with, uh, with county government, corruption is one thing that has actually uh, affected uh, Kenyans and even Africa as at large. From where you see it, like, as the UN Habitat uh, Executive Director, is there maybe some measures that are being taken to ensure that while financing and cap the financing and the capacity support that you are offering to Kenyans or even to the African nations or other countries do not just go to waste but are uh, turned into tangible improvements in urban governance and infrastructure development? 
Indeed, uh, governance is, is absolutely key. Uh, uh, and of course, governance uh, uh, focuses a lot also on, on rule of law, on uh, uh, abiding um, uh, to the uh, abiding to the key uh, uh, democratic uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, justice principles, uh, and um, uh, we have to be we ourselves as UN Habitat have to be held accountable mm -hmm. uh, to uh, any uh, reviews or, or audits. Uh, uh, so of course um, uh, uh, we uh, we have to stick uh, to to these basic uh, rules um, and and there is due diligence uh, and obviously we uh, we practice what we preach also vis-a-vis -vis our Kenyan partners mm -hmm. uh, uh, and they know from the outset when we when we sign project documents and when we define uh, the basic principles of cooperation. Uh, of course, it includes uh, due diligence and uh, and uh, uh, zero tolerance to corruption, uh, and uh, uh, you know all these all these basic uh, mm -hmm. uh, rules and principles, uh, mm -hmm. and potentially if uh, if uh, some wrongdoings would uh, would appear mm -hmm. or if uh, uh, you know there would be uh, questions, of course there are mechanisms uh, how to address that, and uh, and if. Uh, if uh, 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 specific results would lead to uh, to some findings, then of course, again, uh, uh, according to the to the project uh, document, we would uh, we would proceed accordingly. But uh, uh, this is just uh, to to you know to give you the framework. Uh, um, our our experience is uh, is is very positive. I believe also uh, comparing. Uh, uh, my current experience with the period uh, when I served here before, I think uh, Kenya has uh, has uh, has taken some uh, some serious steps uh, uh, towards uh, uh, increasing uh, accountability and and due diligence. Uh, um, I'm sure there is a, a lot more that that can be done, uh, but that of course uh, also. Uh, uh, applies to my own country. I, uh, I uh, know that in my own country, in Slovakia, we have still a lot to do uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to, uh, uh, to corruption, uh, uh, to, let's say, some procurement uh, um, uh, faults or, you know, some uh, uh, not necessarily standard developments in, in that context. So I think we need to also learn from each other. And now I'm speaking uh, a bit uh, 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 like a uh, like a uh, representative of Slovakia rather than uh, of the UN. Um, international cooperation uh, in uh, in in that particular arena, in the arena of anti-corruption and uh, rule of law, is, is is crucial. Thank you so much, uh, sir. We're taking a very quick short break, but of course we're going to come back with much more. Of course, Dr. Milanari is here with us as we continue this conversation. To the board number four is our SMS line. And of course, at GBS TV Africa at Quach Official. Today we have wise brains and we are going to be talking about an amazing topic. <laughs> Most of the time, we normally forget the people that we've grown up with. Our Tunya Metwangalia, the people that have impacted our lives, we forget about them. What you are dogs are very sensitive. They are sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ule ni mtu mwenye utamtu si hivi, ameenda kureport. Kuna adult anajua, we mjinga wewe anajua tia na joke. Wee kuenda uka. Being a teacher, he kwangi easy, ni calling. From my experience, someone did that to me. So I guess, at a self-esteem yangu ikashuka. So at least sayi sasa umekua mkubwa, utaki ifanikie watutuwa klasi yako. To kids, ineza kuwasa, aneza, tena ata ineza kuwasa kumtoka. Ataishi ya kikumbukanga. Mi mwalimu wangu, alinita mjinga. You know, and the kid will forever remember. You can join the conversation on our SMS number, 2144, or at GBS TV Africa, across all social media platforms. I am yours, Rachel Gambo. Hello, hello guys, hello, hello guys. Welcome to another class episode of The Sports Sugu. Tumekuja pa kuchambua ball. Yeah, at least tupati wasi ya content. Mami ni nilea. Uwa na shangaa sana, Mr. Tobin. They tell me I'm a weird fan. Last season, or last year, as you can call it, we saw Man City and we saw Rodri. Everyone knows him. 
Yeah. We saw his crucial role in the mm. Man, City's, Man City's team. Yeah. For him to be to miss in that team, it was kind of ridiculous for me. Mm. Na, it was unbelievable. Um, it was unfair for him as well, mm. if I can add on, on his point. At a, However, we want to be loyal mm, as yeah. Majirani Sisi Kama wa Kenya. No, I'm representing Kenya right mm, now. Yeah. And uh, however, we want to be loyal to our, uh, our, our neighbors. neighbors. Mm -hmm. They are playing very poorly. <laughs> we saw the game against the Morocco. Those guys could have been down five goals, you know? Mm. No, Joe, to get a copy of support, Jamaini or Tanzania. To penny motisha, to, to, to penny motisha, but play good football mm. and we'll support you as your neighbor. This is Art Club, where you can find us every Friday at GBS TV. Grew up in a school where they believe since you're slim, you're fit to be an hostess. Along the way, I had this, I dated into this family, where one of their brothers looked down on me because they were a pilot, okay. and they knew I wanted to be a pilot. And since I come from a humble background, I've been raised in Kibira. Mm -hmm. Looking at your Instagram account, girl, you're just out there. Like every day you have something new to show us, and you're very outstanding. And everyone right now, everyone is doing content. Mm -hmm. What people don't know is it's... It is a competitive industry, but there's space for everyone. Yeah. There are just people God will send to help you along the way. You just mm -hmm. have to be assertive with yeah. yourself yeah. and what you want and mm -hmm. just go there mm -hmm. and believe like if it's a calling, if God has called you to do this, mm -hmm. it will make a way. Like right now I'm just moving like, I don't know when my next partnership is, but I know God will make a way. My content has been embraced so yeah. well out yeah. there. So yeah, Naji yeah. motivates me like, you know what, as long as I've done my part, mm -hmm. God will do the rest yeah. we are your home of entertainment education and everything all about art be safe both gender man and a woman they have the right to be safe and not to be taken advantage of <laughs>
to, to, to be involved. Um, I also would like to mention that our next uh, World Urban Forum, uh, which is uh, our uh, prime platform uh, for bringing together all the various actors uh, in the area of urbanization and sustainable cities together every two years uh, on, on a global platform. Mm -hmm. So next one will be held uh, from the 4th to the 8th of November mm -hmm. of this year in Cairo, in Egypt. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, it is uh, in the African continent. So uh, we hope to see a lot of Kenyans uh, uh, join us. In fact, I, I had a very uh, strategic and, and very exciting conversation with uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Youth, uh, uh, Creative Economy and Sports, uh, Honorable Ababu Namamba, who, who is a dear uh, colleague and, and friend of, of many years, and we were discussing the same, how to better involve uh, Kenya, uh, Kenya's youth uh, in some of these global platforms, including uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the participation at the Youth Assembly that uh, will be part of the World Urban Forum in Cairo in November. So uh, I am mentioning all that because uh, maybe our viewers uh, will appreciate that there are some practical tangible uh, opportunities mm -hmm. uh, for, for them to potentially explore. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting. Well, let's also get some, uh, some uh, questions from Twitter. Uh, the Ken Mwangi from Twitter as is asking, who are the partners of UN Habitat in the grassroots? And how can I partner with you on innovation? What? We have a lot of uh, partners um, in addition to, uh, to the government and uh, to, uh, to the counties. Uh, we work with uh, universities, with the academia, I can mention uh, uh, KCA University, I can mention University of Nairobi, uh, but of course a lot of uh, other uh, technically uh, oriented uh, uh, universities as well. UN Habitat has, has a network which is called UN Habitat Uni, uh, where we invite universities to, to partner with us. So uh, this is potentially also an invitation to other universities in Kenya to, uh, to join the, uh, the UN Habitat uh, Uni network. Mm -hmm. Then we have a special platform uh, for the private sector, mm -hmm. uh, because private sector, of course, brings uh, uh, often the innovations, but also brings investment. Uh, mm -hmm. And the future of, uh, of the cities without investment is simply mm -hmm. unimaginable. And uh, the platform that we have at UN Habitat for engaging with the private sector is called World Urban Campaign. Again, we uh, we create uh, opportunities and uh, ways and means for, for the private sector to engage with us, uh, including on, on, on the topic of smart uh, cities, uh, where we are teaming up with uh, some of the key players uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that, of course, uh, provide uh, uh, digital uh, solutions uh, uh, and other uh, innovative technical solutions for, for the cities of, uh, of the future. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, Kenya is a trailblazer mm -hmm. uh, of uh, you know, some of those developments. Everybody knows uh, about M-Pesa. Of course, uh, this is not necessarily limited to the cities, no? but uh, um, even in Europe, uh, 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 we all know that, uh, that uh, uh, in Kenya you have the highest level of... Uh, uh, of uh, 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 mobile uh, uh, financial transaction in mm -hmm. the transactions in the world. Uh, so certainly these are the ways how anybody can, can partner with us. Uh, mm -hmm. We work also with Kenya civil society. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a stakeholder engagement uh, uh, platform. And I also would like to mention that actually in May mm -hmm. of this year here at the United Nations office, or uh, UN Compound in Nairobi uh, will be hosting the next uh, uh, global mm -hmm. UN uh, civil society conference. Mm -hmm. So uh, civil society actors, uh, please join us uh, uh, in May. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Well, I us to uh, indulge in another conversation still altogether on matters of decent housing. When you talk about decent housing, because this has been a conversation that we've had when talk about decent housing and uh, sustainable cities, they go in hand, hand in hand. But uh, in Kenya, uh, the issue of uh, sustainable fashion has been quite controversial. Maybe can you, could you maybe elaborate how crucial a decent housing is 
And now when you talk about now affordable housing that we have in Kenya, uh, what is the, like, uh, is decent housing, affordable housing? And is there any other way maybe that we can achieve decent housing without uh, affordable housing that maybe uh, that we are having currently? Yes, the housing conversation is absolutely crucial uh, yeah. in Kenya, in other parts of Africa, but in many other parts of the of the world, including uh, uh, Europe or my own country, mm -hmm. um, where we also have uh, a lot of discussion about um, uh, uh, apartments, mm -hmm. flats, uh, houses that uh, that uh, the people can afford, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because not everybody of course uh, uh, has a salary that uh, that is at, at a certain level mm -hmm. uh, not everybody can afford mortgage or can afford to invest mm -hmm. and of course you have in every society you have people uh, that need the support mm -hmm. and that need to have certain schemes that uh, that allow them to uh, to to have access mm -hmm. to what you what you just call decent housing mm -hmm. We, of course, uh, talk about affordable mm -hmm. and adequate housing. Mm -hmm. um, um, and of course, these are uh, uh, closely linked and it's important that, that we link them because, of course, one cannot be replaced uh, uh, by the other. Mm -hmm. And um, globally, UN Habitat has, uh, has estimated that globally the, the housing gap uh, is at, at such a level that if we wanted to address it uh, uh, now, we would have to build 96,000 new housing units a day globally, mm -hmm. which of course is unrealistic, mm -hmm. but uh, it should be a bit of a wake-up call for us to realize the, the scale of the problem and, and to focus on it. And of course, uh, um, uh, Kenya is no exception. Okay. Uh, uh, we know that the demand, uh, the annual housing demand uh, in, uh, in Kenya is around uh, 250,000. Uh, and uh, there is a supply of about uh, 50,000. So, of course, the gap uh, is around uh, 200,000 annually. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why, of course, we applaud uh, uh, the government uh, and His Excellency the President prioritizing this particular uh, issue. And we work very closely uh, with the government, uh, with the President, uh, on, on this particular issue mm -hmm. um, by again, supporting uh, them with, uh, with the expertise uh, mm -hmm. uh, on, on all these issues that, that I'm talking about, uh, on ensuring that, uh, that whatever is done, whatever is planned, designed, foreseen, is, is, uh, is done in such a way that, uh, 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 that it takes into account uh, uh, various other developments, socioeconomic trends, uh, demographic trends, but also uh, uh, you know, natural conditions uh, uh, and, uh, you know, potential climate developments. Uh, we have seen uh, in recent months, uh, uh, you know, how much damage uh, uh, rains have caused in, in Kenya, in different parts of Kenya. And of course, this cannot be ignored. We in UN Habitat have um, uh, two uh, experts from the uh, Kenyan Ministry of Housing. Mm -hmm. They are with us in our team. Uh, uh, so we, we have... Uh, an everyday conversation uh, with uh, with the Ministry of Housing, ensuring uh, that uh, uh, the uh, focus on this issue, of course, uh, is is maintained. Um, uh, we are also helping uh, Kenya mobilize uh, additional resources. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, uh, a joint project uh, that uh, UN Habitat is implementing. Uh, with the government of Kenya that is supported by the European Union delegation here in uh, Kenya with the amount of about 8 million uh, uh, euro. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, uh, uh, there is also a lot of uh, interest and support coming from the World Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are some of the uh, practical issues that, uh, that we are helping the government with in order to accelerate, because mm -hmm. obviously their intention, their goal, is to accelerate, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, the the building of, of new housing units. Mm -hmm. But I have to, of course, emphasize <laughs> the new housing units have to be built in a sustainable, uh, inclusive, uh, and uh, 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 green uh, uh, way, uh, taking into account uh, uh, the needs of uh, of the people. Uh, not only today, but uh, also also tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Thank you so much. You spoke about decent housing and you've elucidated much, a lot of things actually, what and how the UN Habitat is working with the government and also other people. But one great and major challenge to decent housing, affordable housing, or even sustainable cities is what is known as urban conflicts that we have experienced a, a, a lot. Now, when the when, when urban areas experiences the, the urban conflicts and the wars, of course, in various regions, uh, the toll of urban wars uh, has caused a lot of things. For example, there is population displacement, there is environmental harm, uh, there is causing infrastructure destruction, and of course, it has led to lasting social and economic issues. Now, permit me to actually inqu inquire from you that uh, from where you are, do you have maybe some things that can be done or that have already been done to maybe foster recovery in these urban areas that actually have been affected by by conflicts there's some that actually may have been put in place or are these are there those that actually are being put in place and generally what is the panacea also to this conflict so that we as we recover also these urban places we also have a panacea or we have a clear blueprint of how maybe we can also stop this war Indeed, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, topical and very relevant issue of today. I would start by saying that um, you know, our traditional uh, key priorities uh, in the area of urban development uh, uh, in recent years have been housing, uh, uh, addressing urban climate issues, uh, and also focusing on localization mm -hmm. of, of all the SDGs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and. Uh, Recently, very recently, in addition to these key three, uh, uh, three key priorities, uh, we have been forced, literally forced, to add also the issue of urban crises, emergencies, uh, urban resilience, and everything that is related uh, uh, to that. Uh, our crisis slash emergency work has, uh, has uh, multiplied uh, in, in recent years. Unfortunately, I have to add, uh, um, Part of it is related to, uh, to, uh, cl to climate-related challenges, mm -hmm. to natural disasters. Uh, you will uh, uh, remember some of the most la latest uh, uh, examples, uh, mm -hmm. whether we are talking about uh, uh, Mozambique, uh, Malawi, Libya, uh, the Sahel. Uh, this is, uh, of course, some of these uh, um, unfortunate uh, situations. Morocco, of course. Uh, in Africa, but um, in many other parts of the world, we are talking about Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where, of course, um, uh, uh, UN Habitat has been involved. So it's uh, uh, natural disasters, but also man-made conflicts. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, and now I have to also speak uh, uh, as, a, as a diplomat, mm -hmm. uh, as somebody who spent um, uh, 11 years uh, uh, in New York uh, at the United Nations dealing with the, the peace and security issues on a, on a daily basis. It's unprecedented, uh, of course, what, uh, what we see today in Ukraine, uh, what we see today um, in, uh, 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 in uh, the Palestinian uh, territories uh, and, or of course, in the Middle East in, in the wider context. Uh, uh, and um, we need to redouble our efforts uh, uh, for peace mm -hmm. uh, in the multilateral context. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. But now back to UN Habitat, mm -hmm. um, we are assisting uh, also uh, all these uh, countries uh, with uh, uh, reconstruction and rebuilding. Mm -hmm. uh, and our role is crucial. Uh, in the sense that uh, whatever the reconstruction and rebuilding efforts are, mm -hmm. we need to build back better. That's, mm -hmm. of course, the, uh, the, the slogan uh, mm -hmm. that we use. We cannot build back better to the original uh, standards that may have been used, uh, I don't know, 40 or, or 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So whether it is in Ukraine, where mm -hmm. we are scaling up our, uh, our support, uh, to the country and uh, to the cities, mm -hmm. uh, and I will be visiting uh, uh, Ukraine uh, uh, probably in April mm -hmm. to, uh, to of course, upscale our our uh, engagement uh, and to also ensure that we are fit for purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but same thing applies, of course, to uh, to the 
support that we will be uh, also uh, uh, giving, affording to, uh, to uh, Gaza, mm -hmm. where also we will need to, uh, in a major way, scale up uh, our reconstruction and rebuilding efforts. Uh, mm -hmm. We have been, uh, as UN Habitat, involved in, uh, in the Palestinian uh, uh, territories uh, already since 2002, mm -hmm. for, for many years, uh, including in Gaza. But of course, uh, the, the, uh, the current uh, conflict, unfortunately, puts uh, uh, our earlier efforts uh, uh, into relative terms. And of mm -hmm. course, we will have to, in a major way, uh, rethink and, and accelerate uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the, the work. Of course, in both cases, in the case of Ukraine and, um, uh, and uh, uh, in the Middle East, we, we hope that, uh, uh, that uh, the peace and security will prevail finally and that uh, people will, will no longer be suffering and that we will be able, of course, to, to restore their living space. Uh, to restore uh, the the the, uh, the basic uh, uh, urban services mm -hmm. and the basic urban infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, gradually uh, for them mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, it's uh, it's unacceptable in the in the 21st century let me say it very very clearly mm -hmm. Th thank you so much before I delve also into some questions that have been asked online let me just ask you still on uh, on, on some issues like global pandemics. It's one that actually affected uh, the planet in, in a very negative way, actually, that took us back, and that is the COVID-19. Uh, when you talk about uh, such pandemics, there could be more uh, global pandemics that actually could maybe yeah. affect uh, now the sustainable cities, generally as you guys continue to, as you continue to build sustainable cities. Now, my question is, even as you continue the version 2030, how is the planet prepared uh, from where you see it or is it prepared maybe to 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 build resilience uh into the future so that mm -hmm. should we have like uh, such uh, pandemics occur then we are better sure that uh, it will be it will not affect uh, us as much as it did uh, caught us unawares and uh, maybe generally to what is being done to to ensure that we actually mitigate the effects of these pandemics in the future. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks very much for that. It's a uh, it's uh, it's a very uh, important uh, question. Of course, uh, uh, the I'm afraid the human nature often is that we are not so good at learning uh, from our own mistakes mm -hmm. or our learning uh, from the past. But we have to do better, uh, undoubtedly. The pandemic was a shock uh, to to all of us. Uh, uh, we we never expected uh, the scale and uh, and and the nature of uh, of the challenge that the pandemic brought. Uh, I think uh, uh, we need to be clear about that. Mm -hmm. And we all know that uh, that it may it may happen again. Mm -hmm. uh, it may reoccur in one way or another. Uh, of course. Uh, uh, hoping is one thing, but uh, but hoping doesn't uh, save lives mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and doesn't prepare us uh, for uh, uh, for uh, the future. So uh, we need to learn better, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, also in UN Habitat, uh, we 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 do focus uh, on that a lot. We work very closely with the World Health, Health Organization, with the WHO, uh, which is obviously in the lead mm -hmm. in the UN system. Uh, for for these issues, uh, um, you know that the director general of uh, uh, of uh, uh, the WHO uh, comes from this region of uh, of East Africa. Uh, uh, Dr. Tedros is from uh, from uh, Ethiopia. Uh, we, uh, as UN Habitat, um, uh, in 2021, also published uh, a comprehensive report, which uh, which uh, uh, people can easily find on our website, mm -hmm. on cities and the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we, we focus a lot also on pandemic uh, preparedness. Mm -hmm. And there is a concept uh, in, the, uh, in the whole UN system focused on disaster risk reduction. And of course, that uh, concept has now been uh, enlarged also to the, to the area of global health and to, uh, to potential uh, further pandemics. So, mm -hmm. so there is a lot of uh, uh, substance and there is a lot of evidence mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, we uh, we need to use it. Uh, we we cannot uh, close our eyes, or we cannot have short memories. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, because we all uh, know too well uh, mm -hmm. what, uh, what happened and, and of course what, what needed to be done. Here I would like to emphasize one important aspect uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that UN Habitat has been, has been particularly active uh, on and that is how we involve mm -hmm. in uh, addressing all these global challenges mm -hmm. uh, the local and regional governments or local and regional authorities. You will agree with me when I say that uh, uh, delivering uh, the, the aid and the assistance uh, to the people uh, during the pandemic would have not been possible without the local and regional governments, uh, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was in Kenya or it was in my own country, Slovakia or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, involving uh, mayors, governors and other local actors uh, to, to these important uh, uh, developments is, is absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. And we work very hard uh, at UN Habitat because we are the focal point uh, for the whole UN system for cooperation with local and regional authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are bringing this particular topic also to the summit of the future. And maybe this is a, a good way to, uh, to wrap up our, our conversation slowly, know that uh, uh, that um, uh, in September of this year in New York, uh, we will have the uh, Summit of the Future, where we will be looking at uh, uh, key challenges, but also uh, trying to design uh, uh, really major solutions mm -hmm. for, some, so for some of these uh, key challenges. And as I said, UN Habitat is bringing mm -hmm. uh, for the Summit of the Future the issue of involving uh, uh, mayors, governors, local and regional governments better to the uh, discussions. Okay, let me just ask you uh, some questions here that are actually streaming from uh, the internet. Uh, Kevin Manuia is asking, the current governor of Nairobi wants to ease congestion in the city by introduction of subways and commuter trains for commuting purposes. How is it possible with the current city plan and also there's another question from Timothy Omondi. Given Kenya's growing population and increased urbanization, sprawling of slums cannot be avoided. What are some of the solutions that UN Habitat can propose for this to be realized? Yeah, very good. Thanks. Uh, uh, very, very pertinent questions. Mm -hmm. First, um, uh, about uh, Nairobi and, uh, and uh, infrastructure slash transport. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, indeed, uh, public uh, transportation is, is a key uh, solution or one of the key solutions uh, in the urban context that can, uh, of course, uh, lead to decongestion, uh, that can help uh, uh, in many areas. Uh, uh, people maybe would be surprised uh, how much uh, uh, the, the transportation uh, situation or how much uh, improving uh, the situation with public transport can effect uh, can have if, uh, effect positive effect uh, uh, on on other issues on socio uh, economic issues on housing uh, and uh, on job creation and all that mm -hmm. uh, because um, we have seen and the uh, UN Habitat has evidence uh, for that we have seen that um, uh, uh, often the 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 traffic situation is complicated uh, uh, let's say in Nairobi but uh, of course in in other places as well, uh, due to the fact that, uh, that people have to commute uh, uh, in uh, somehow failing uh, uh, public transport solutions uh, long distances. And if uh, we were able to, to, bring, uh, uh, the, to bring affordable housing closer to the place where people have economic opportunities, job opportunities, it would have immediately major effect on the transport situation. So again, um, we are working with uh, the governor uh, of Nairobi, with my good uh, uh, friend and, and colleague Johnson Sakaja, also on, on, on that, uh, you know, how to uh, design these things uh, better for the future and how to link, uh, link uh, uh, let's say, housing, uh, uh, economic opportunities, transport better. Uh, in, in a comprehensive manner. Of course, I mean, we are not here to, to provide any magic solutions. Of course, those solutions need to be, uh, need to be taken by the, by the local leaders, but they can, they can rely on us. Uh, they know that uh, we are here for them to, of course, to support, 
to to provide data, to to uh, you know provide analysis studies, uh, uh, and uh, potentially also resource mobilization. And this is exactly what we've we've been doing. Uh, it's obvious that Nairobi is. Uh, 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 really missing uh, 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 in a major way uh, a, 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 an efficient public trans uh, transport system, mm -hmm. whether it would be based on uh, a railway uh, system, like in some other places, or it would be uh, it would be a combination of railway and buses, uh, and of course other solutions. We all see, unfortunately, that. Uh, uh, that the current Matatu uh, uh, situation, if we simplify it, uh, uh, is, is unsustainable. And sooner or later, it will lead to further challenges. Uh, uh, so, of course, it needs to be urgently addressed. Uh, and the other question was, uh, please well, remind me of uh, that, it was on innovations. Uh, yes, still, if I can just read it, Votib, is uh, given Kenya's growing population and increased urbanization, mm -hmm. sprawling of slums cannot be avoided. Yeah. What are some of the solutions that you inhabited can I propose for this to be realized? Indeed, yes, yes. Sorry for, for not remembering it uh, well. Um, um, informal settlements or slum are, slums are, of course, a, a, a major issue, not only for Kenya, mm -hmm. for uh, many other countries in Africa, in, in Asia, even in Latin America. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we also need to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, key... Uh, 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 area for, uh, for ad addressing this issue is also linking it to land uh, and property rights, to economic and job opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, uh, to, to education. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not only uh, a housing issue. It is, uh, of course, uh, uh, um, slums or informal settlements are in many ways um, uh, a, a symptom mm -hmm. uh, uh, of uh, uh, other uh, uh, important uh, developments in, uh, uh, in in the socio-economic arena. So, of course, we uh, we we uh, primarily take uh, 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 sprawling of slums as uh, as uh, uh, as a housing issue. But then we have to be absolutely uh, aware, and we need to be uh, able to address. Uh, this uh, uh, issue in a comprehensive manner, taking into account all these uh, uh, all these other areas, we have a special uh, 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 network uh, which is which is focused on land and property rights. Mm -hmm. We work uh, with a lot of professionals in this area, and again, advising uh, countries, including Kenya, on on how to speed up uh, 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 certain processes related to property rights, uh, 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 title deeds. Uh, I can also mention that uh, uh, there is an ongoing effort uh, related to digitalization of title deeds in Kenya. So, you know, these are all important uh, contributions to, uh, to, to fixing some of these uh, challenges. Thank you so much. The People's Ambassador is His Excellency. We've had a good conversation, but of course, we, because of time, we need to come to, we need to wrap up. But as we wrap up, Maybe you can give a parting shot uh, as we come to the end of this conversation. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Eugene, for, for this invitation and for this uh, truly fascinating uh, discussion, mm -hmm. an opportunity to, uh, to kind of uh, maybe demystify uh, a little bit what, uh, what it is that UN Habitat uh, does uh, uh, or to, you know, uh, somehow uh, open the curtain uh, and uh, allow people uh, a, a sneak peek into the different aspects of, uh, of our work. Uh, um, I want to conclude by uh, saying that uh, we will only be successful uh, in the implementation of the 2030 Agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals as such, including, of course, uh, SDG 11 on, city, on sustainable cities and communities, when we design uh, participatory solutions. Uh, when uh, uh, we are all uh, part of the discussions, but also of uh, 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 you know how how we solve these issues. So I would like to invite mm -hmm. uh, all Kenyans, mm -hmm. in particular the the young people, to take their part. Mm -hmm. And everybody can take a certain part. Uh, maybe starting from picking up uh, 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 garbage uh, in in their community. Or uh, you know, talking to the local MP, 
or to uh, the governor or his office about you know some of the uh, challenges that they are experiencing on a daily basis when, mm -hmm. when it comes to basic uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, urban services, mm -hmm. uh, or when it comes to uh, crime on, on the local level. Uh, we should not wait uh, for somebody else to uh, do things. Okay. Uh, we should all try to, to take our uh, part. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when, when this is all brought together, it makes a huge, uh, huge difference. Uh, and I know you agree with me uh, on, on that. Uh, so, uh, uh, so let's hope that uh, together mm -hmm. we can uh, make better times. Th thank you so much once again, His Excellency. I'm looking forward to inviting you again so that we can have much more discussion on the sustainable development goals. Of course, as we continue to look at the progress that you're making uh, uh, at, uh, as UN, and of course, we wish you all the best as UN habitat in your position as the acting Executive Director. Thank you so much. There was Dr. Mikhail Milanair. Of course, as we had a conversation with him, as we wrap up this delightful conversation with Dr. Mikhail, uh, delving into a world of sustainable cities, we've touched on education, global development agendas, and the transformative power of innovation. Thank you for being part of this engaging dialogue. And we'll meet again. Keep the sweetness of sustainable living in your hearts. Take care and stay inspired. My name is Eugene Kwach, and of course, this is the GPS. Thank you.